I fly a KC-135, that's an uh, air fueling plane. Our primary mission is to, is to put gas on the other airplanes. It's, uh, we call it a force multiplier. So um, essentially, if there's an F-16, we'll say, uh, and they have an area of responsibility that they're, where they're supposed to go, they can take off from a base with some armament, get there, if we refuel them, we go to where they're working and hang out just, just in the peripheral. They do what they're doing, what they need to do, and then they come to us for gas and go back and forth. So rather than having a, you know, getting loaded up, going and doing a one hour mission and coming back, and you probably need, you know, dozens of planes to, to give that area the coverage it needs, two, air, two F-16s can, can cover it for six or eight hours with us there with them. We do other things, we do cargo and passengers, and, and like you said, medevacs, sort of all this stuff can come out and they roll pallets right on here with, with stretchers and all the medical equipment, we bring out a whole medical team of like 12 people. Working with the 128th Readiness and Emergency Management Flight, we've got a lot of different hats we wear. Um, both we have peacekeeping mission or peacetime mission and a wartime. The peace side of the mission for our shop is helping the base get ready for and respond to and recover from natural disasters, man-made incidents. Now in the wartime side of it, which is the flip side of the coin, we're what we call the seaburn experts. The chemical, biological, radiological, nuclear, and high yield explosive experts. We handle anything in regards to a chemical attack, possible radiation exposure, nuclear attack. So it's something we hope we never have to deal with, especially here on um, U.S. soil but we're trained to, and we also train the base to make sure they're ready. Students learn a lot about um, being part of a team um, as they learn from these um, military service members. The different roles that are needed to be successful in the military are oftentimes similar to some of the roles that need to be successful in life. And so for us, uh, we like to look and listen and learn from these models of how to help our society function. They were all really engaged. We were hitting on levels that piqued their interest and we weren't trying to speak above them or below them. We were trying to take it um, to their knowledge base, trying to interact with them at a point where they're not feeling threatened, they're not feeling pushed into any one direction or another. We're just trying to give them that information base to make the most informed decision and show them something that they don't get to see. I don't know of many high schools that have been able to go out to a military base within their hometown, let alone 30 minutes from where they go to school and live, to see one of the jets and possibly maybe work in that career field later on if they like what they see. As a Slinger resident, it's really nice to be able to talk to the high schoolers and any kids in the community, just to know that that's an option for them and that we're here and that you can be a part of something bigger and still live in Slinger. You know, you don't have to be active duty and be stationed in Germany or Japan, you know. You can still be in Slinger and have your family and come home every night for the most part and still contribute to the military. The value with the students is to gain a lot more perspective on not just military in a whole, but also the unseen individuals that works behind the scenes that what you see is not all that there is. I mean, there's a lot of moving parts that works um, in, in tangent with, with everything else to ensure mission success.